Welcome to my comparison of these three budget IEMs, the CCA Lyra, the Tangsu Warner and the Truth Ear Hola, which are pretty much all around 20 euro and they are like really often recommended for people who just want a cheap IEM or want to get into IEMs. So I bought all three of these because I really wanted to know where the differences are because Again, these are pretty much the same price, are recommended really often. So it doesn't matter which one you buy or we'll see in this review. So let's start with the Lyra here from CCA. It's pretty light for being kind of a bulky shell, but it has this really cool see-through glass-ish design. Where you, where you can see everything inside. And I, I kind of really like this design. I have seen like quite a few IEMs that are kind of see-through and uh, I think it's really cool. But you also have this, I think it's a it's metal plate here with the uh, colored um, yeah, inlay. There's one in white, but I thought blue was a little cooler. Some kind of diamond look-alikes there. For 20, 20 euro, it's a cool design. And uh, it actually looks uh, pretty, pretty cool in person. I, I think it looks more expensive on pictures, but still it, it looks cool. And although sometimes I'm kind of wondering as if the, the plate here, the thing is really metal, all in all, it just feels really well built. Again, it's light, although it's pretty big. While it is comfortable, I can still feel it in my ear and it does give me this slightly uncomfortable bulky feeling in my ears, like it does not disappear. The nozzle also feels somewhat bigger than I would like it to. What I do like right now is that I found some good fitting ear tips with the Lyra here and it does not move. Like I don't have to readjust it or anything and I kind of gladly take some slightly bulky feeling over having to readjust the IEM like every five minutes. So still all in all, I would say this is the least comfortable out of the three, but it is not uncomfortable. Like it's it's just because the, the other two are really, really good in comfort. So the, the Lyra is like a step below that, but it's still okay. Like if, if you're not really sensitive there, then it's still fine. The next one is the Tangsu Warner. This one is lighter and smaller in design than the Lyra. And I have to say, I like the aesthetics here even more. Again, it is this see-through design where you can see everything inside. Yeah, and um, the, the design of the back shell plate here is just it's really, really nice. I, I kind of really like this white misty design with the inlay here or just the uh, the Tangsu label logo. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it's just, it's really cool design and it's not overdone. Like it doesn't look like uh, jewelry, <laughs> like the Lyra where you could maybe think, ah, it's a little bit too much. This one here is just a little less fancy. And uh, it's not too flashy, but also not plain. So if you're, again, if you're not into that kind of in-your-face design, then uh, this one could be your thing. It's also extremely comfortable. Like, really, these things don't bother me at all. I tried various ear tips with the Tangsu, and obviously within some limits, a lot were comfortable with these here. Um, and since I am usually bother me at least a little bit, even if they are comfortable, this really means something. And again, build quality, it's pretty similar to the Lyra. Again, it's lighter, but it feels good. Like it does not feel too cheap. And again, for the price of, what is it? 20, 22, 23 euro. It's, it's awesome. It's really, really good. Last one, the Truth Ear Holla. Uh, it's the smallest one of the bunch and it's even lighter than the Warner, but it's also definitely the most cheaply constructed. It only has this really plain um, plastic shell and yeah, no fancy design here. It's, it's really just 
just little plastic thingy in your hand and um, it feels like that. Just the, the feeling of holding it in your hand is just way different than the other two. Even though it's just a few euro cheaper, that does mean a lot in this price category when it comes to build quality and design. So again, no fancy design here, no see-through fake glass shells or colors, just this white spider web thing thingy here that seems to be kind of printed on and then put in the shell. Like you can see there is, like you can see the lines here, there, there, you can see the lines. Um, so I have no idea if this could chip away after some time. But scratching it here does not feel like I can damage it, so that's a good thing, I guess. It's just as comfortable as the Tangsu, and because it's so small, it, it does protrude even less than the Tangsu. So all in all, the Holla is the least flashy appearing out of the bunch, but it's extremely comfortable. Just really feels cheap. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I have to say something about the cable. <laughs> um, Cable-wise... They all feel fine, neither especially good nor bad, but I found the cable on the Tangsu to feel the most expensive and flexible, but it does tangle up more than the other, which are more rigid. In my eyes, there is like no, it's, these are not like bad cables or anything, it's just like, it's okay for the price, and again, Tangsu for me seems to be the best one. Let's talk about the sound and again let's start with the CCA Lyra. Uh, the Lyra has a pretty typical U shape and is the most bassy out of the three. So it has a boost in the bass and it has a boost in the treble or upper mid range specifically here. Uh, bass is actually done pretty fine and no part of the bass frequencies is overwhelming the other. It's nicely extended and punchy. I really think bass here is the, the most satisfying and impactful. There's not really a, like a boomy mid bass here, so it does not really bleed into the mid range much. There's just like a gentle slope down to give the uh, lower mid-range some power and uh, some body to instruments and voices. So bass is pretty clean and works with most music. It's not even overwhelmed by uh, double bass drums and uh, such things, which always kind of annoys me when there's like a bassy headphone or I am. Uh, otherwise, the mid-range is pretty clean. It's not the focus of the I am, but uh, you can you can tell that instruments sound a little less hefty and, and just a little less natural and compared to the Tang Su, for example. But I guess that's just the nature of a V or U shape where the mid-range usually takes a step back to make the uh, sound just more energetic and just, just to please the average consumer who wants his bass, I think. Uh, there's also quite a bit of extra energy around 1 to 2k and then again around 8 to 10. So basically in the upper mid range and right in the treble, which actually makes these like the, the sharpest and the most shouty out of these three. It is not with every recording, but it can get really exhausting with like some things where voices sound kind of screeching and with the occasional sibilance. Again, w with some recordings, it was really, really, uh, it gave the music like a certain extra of energy, which, which was really uh, nice to listen to. But then you had recordings where I, I just couldn't take the singer any longer because his voice was like screeching on like some because his or her voice sounded like screeching on a school board like certain times. That was just like a little bit much. Otherwise the treble extension is fine. It's not the most airy I am so you don't have a lot of like shimmer. But none of these three are. And uh, besides the few peaks I mentioned that makes the voice and again the sibilance 
kind of a problem sometimes. Um, besides that, it's actually done pretty okay. And again, with some recordings, I actually really, really like the Lyra because it's such a powerful and clean sound that you get for like 20 or uh, 22 euro. It really depends on the recording here. Let's go on with the Tangsu Warner. Soundwise, the Warner is tuned mostly neutral with a warm and smooth character and really nice treble that to me is present enough but not harsh or piercing. Like the Lyra, it is kind of U-shaped, so but here most the bass and the sub bass not as much elevated as with the Lyra, but it's still elevated enough in the mid bass and in the lower mid range. It is noticeably less bassy than the Lyra, but overall pretty similar. Though again, it sounds warmer. It's somewhat less punchy, there's just less bass presence there and it's somewhat less clean than the Lyra because it has this kind of smooth character there. So the Warner is not a bass e IEM but it's still good enough for most genres to not sound light. And the mid-range here is really really nice. Instruments are present and they sound really full and where the Lyra sounds kind of somewhat harsh in the upper mid-range here and there. The Warner sounds way smoother and just more pleasant to your ears. <laughs> and because of the warmness, there is some bleed into the mid-range, which again makes the bass somewhat less clean and just the overall sound a little less clean. But that is kind of the, the, the character here and it's really nicely done. Um, the treble follows the rest of the tonality and for me, again, <laughs> sounds really smooth, but uh, still clear too. It does not have the best extension, so it's not really airy, but overall symbols and just the, the openness of the sound that comes with like a good treble extension is still there and it's okay. Like I do not feel like I'm missing anything here. Best thing here is that the voices are really clean and not distant. And with the, the dip in the uh, lower to center treble, which makes this like a little more smooth i keep i keep repeating this word here uh, but it's really it's it's really the character here um and with that dip there it takes some of the harshness out and uh, nothing sounds piercing here nothing sounds i don't hear any sibilance or whatever so again while i would really not call it bright it is also not dull or veiled they did a good job with the tuning here to make it work with a lot of music genres. It avoids the shoutiness and just the, the shrill character that some voices have with the Lyra. So again, tuning wise, what you get here for just a few bucks is just awesome. It works really well. Like you can, can listen to this thing here for hours without fatigue. Really, really nicely done. Last in line is the Truth Ear Holla. I would describe the general sound signature here as being neutral, kind of relaxed with a little boost in the bass and more laid back upper mids and treble. It's the safest tuning out of the three here. And yeah, let's start with the bass. Actually, it feels kind of the most boring out of these three here and it's it just sounds kind of flat. In quantity, it should be similar to the Warner, but it feels less to me. It's just a little less punchy and a little weaker in the sub bass. It's obviously still really good for the price. Like this is the cheapest out of the three. And I'm just criticizing it here because you have such a huge range of options nowadays in the budget chi-fi market. And uh, comparing it with regular earbuds, easily double or triple the price, the Holla still does extremely well. But the others here do too. So hmm. um, the mid-range is pretty much the best thing about the Holla. It is not fatiguing or shrill in the upper mids like the Lyra again, but it still retains like a lot of energy and presence of instruments and voices. Because of this, mid-range here sounds pretty good for rock, like instruments are full and 
natural and there is just like a really nice clarity in the mid-range which honestly again feels pretty exceptional for under 20 euro but so does the Warner. Getting into the high frequencies the holler is kind of really disappointing here. There is a nice relaxing downward slope from the lower treble onwards which kind of contributes to the safe tuning but then it completely dies off somewhere on the way. I think it is after 8000 hertz or something where a lot of IEMs actually have pretty okay extension or even peaks, the holler just does not exist anymore. So what does that mean? Instruments like cymbals and other drums and even some voices when they hit that part of the frequency range, they just sound really dull. Orchestral sounds just lose a, a lot of energy and the, the, the whole sound seems more cramped together and uh, there's less staging. But again, it is mostly the tonality here that is annoying. It just feels like there's something missing. Which, funnily enough, matches the weaker bass I mentioned in the beginning. So to my ears, the holler is on all like less energetic than the other two. Just less engaging and flat out more boring. thought I'm gonna make a short extra section about the technicalities. I'll be honest here, there's not that much difference between the three. Still, I would say the Lyra is maybe the best in the separation of instruments and just the, the overall imaging and the, the picture of the stage. Um, it, it feels like the, the smoothness of the Warner just makes it a little worse here. Detail seems about the same. Surprisingly fine for the price range. But yeah, do not expect wonders here. Again, I thought the bass was really uh, capable on the Lyra. That was uh, really a surprise here. But otherwise, these are kind of similar there. I think the, the, the holler is just one step below in both detail and separation and just feels a little more blurry than the other two. Uh, the Lyra and the Warner also do sound more open than the Holla. It's kind of weird to talk about something like stage when it comes to IEMs because they do not like interact with your ear in a way over ears do. But I would just say like imagine a stage and there is a certain openness some IEMs have and some do not. And it, I think it mostly depends on uh, tuning and Obviously, they do interact a little with your ear. I'm not a professional there, so don't quote me on that. But yeah, you get what I mean. So these two do that better than the Holla. There is like a more, just a more cramped together sound and just, yeah, less of a stage there. So in conclusion, which one of these I like the most? My ranking here would be first the Tangsu Warner then the CCA Lyra and at least, who would have guessed, the Truth Ear Holla. So why is that? For my ears, the Tangsu simply offers the best mix of smooth but not dull sound with a good enough bass and treble extension with a really nice mid-range. Um, you, you basically have an all-rounder here that works with most genres. Sure, Lyra has more bass and somewhat clearer bit better extended treble but the sharp upper mid-range is like sometimes is really really noticeable and I couldn't listen to some LPs there with the Lyra. It wasn't always but sometimes and it was annoying enough with these songs. Um, if music is mixed differently it sounds really nice though and I I think the Lyra is maybe a bit better for gaming here because of the slightly better imaging and just the, the stronger bass itself. Actually having these two here, I really do not see the need for the Truth Ear Holler. It's relatively relaxing to listen to, but the Warner just does everything better here. It does not die off in the treble, bass is a little bit more impactful. 
Um, the build quality feels better, even though there's just, again, a few euro difference here. And yeah, it's just a little bit more expensive, but you can feel this little bit here in the build quality and just how the whole construction feels. Still, I sometimes like the Lyra more, again, with some songs and artists. I was actually listening to a lot of Rotting Christ there, and the bass here is just an incredible clean driving power. So it was really nice there to listen to something with the Lyra. So if you only game, and yeah, I would say mainly listen to electronic music. You can go with the Lyra because there you do not have to deal with the sharp upper mid range and voices and this kind of stuff. It will work better there. Um, but otherwise, I would choose the Tang Su because it is incredible what you get here for what 24, 25 euro. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's wow. <laughs> but actually, I like any of these more than the 7 Hertz Zero that I recently reviewed. Like, this is the same price range, and I would take any one of these over the 7 Hertz Zero because none of these here have this kind of metallic harshness that the 7 Hertz Zero has in every song, basically. I have to get used to it. So that was my comparison of these three budget IMs. I hope I could help you a little bit with like choosing what to buy and uh, yeah, just to give you some information here on your way to the perfect in-ear monitor. Hope to see you next time and yeah, goodbye.